About a year ago, I had just finished a program coaching with Landmark Education. And I love coaching because I really get so much out of it. When there's only four people in the audience, you really notice if they're listening or looking at. So last year, I'm sitting there at the crossroads of my life, and I'm wondering, you know, well, I know what I wanted to do. There was two things that I wanted to accomplish with my life that I saw last year. One was I wanted to get some writing done. I wanted to finish a book, and there were some other things I wanted to complete. And the second thing was I had, I had made the decision that I did want to pursue a change in my career to become a professional speaker, to take the workshops that I had developed and to go ahead and present them on a professional basis. And I looked around and I thought, where can I, at this point in my life, go and get what I need to become a professional speaker? Where can I get the training? Where can I get just be able to get the thing so that I can take what I've already had and make that extra step? And without even a hesitation, first thing that came to my mind was the Speaker's Bureau. Because having been a charter member, I had seen how this club was structured to help people develop those tools to become a professional speaker. It had all the elements. It needed some tweak, tweaking. It needed some, some, some effort put into it. But it had all the essential elements there. So at that point, I returned and became an ongoing member. And the next thing I did was says, well, I need to volunteer to be a leader because that way I can have more of an impact on how the club is structured, those little little details. And I knew Rick was being was becoming the president, and I was excited because I knew under his leadership that I would have the freedom to make some contributions. And the club, I knew, could help me reach that goal. To understand all this, I want to take a few minutes and talk about this concept of structure. Now, if you, oh, by the way, I want to introduce you. I'm using a new program, fantastic new program. It's called Manual PowerPoint, okay? It's a whole new concept. And so, uh, my first slide, click, fade in. <laughs> There's lots of definitions of structure, okay? But I don't want to focus on all of those. It gets confusing. So click fade out. We're going to look at click fade in <laughs> just one specific definition. Okay? And that is a set of repetitive actions or activities that create or cause a specific result. An example is children need structure. So what do we say structure, that children need structure? What do we mean? Click fade. By the way, uh, one thing about this manual, we have uh, PowerPoint, we can uh, put the sound on mute. So I'm going to do that for the rest of the presentation. <laughs> so when we say that children need structure, what we're saying is two things. One, they need organization, right, in their environment. But the second thing we're saying is, they need to have a repetitive set of activities so that they are comfortable and secure about what's going to happen each day. You see, that structure of activities is really, how would I put this? It's how our life came to be what it is, whatever we have. So how did this occur? So let's begin by looking at the structure of a structure. Now, the way that we're using it, there are two major elements in the structure that we create in our life. One is our belief systems, and two are the actions that we take. Now, let's look briefly at how those all tie together. So, and this is out there, you hear this all over. I'm not telling you anything new, so I'm going to go through it rather quickly so that I really get to the meat of what I want to talk about this morning. So when we have a belief system, that's a structure. It's a structured way of looking at life. You see, in our beliefs, we believe are the truth. And the important thing about our beliefs, and most of them, 
we set into place before we were five years old. And then we reinforced them, and we added to some. But the basic core beliefs that have run our life, we put into place at five. Our beliefs then determine our thoughts. You're not going to think something about yourself or life that's contrary to what you believe. Would you agree? You're not going to do it. So if I say, I'm a poor businessman, my thoughts aren't going to have come up that's contrary to that basic core belief. Now, the beliefs then determine our emotions. There's a saying we have in my workshop, every emotion is preceded by a thought. So you can't feel something until you think something. And research has shown this, the brain research and behavioral. So this is well known. Now we have our emotion, and what we feel determines our actions. Right? And our actions determine our results. Okay, so we know this. But what we're going to focus on really is that the core relationship is that the beliefs determine the actions. Well, we could spend hours and hours and hours on belief. No time this morning. I'm going to focus on actions as a structure. So we say that specific actions that create specific results. So let me give you an example. Now last time I talked about the different levels or, or effectiveness of structure. So we talked about, and I'll just kind of go over the whole thing. So let's say I might, the result I want to create for my life is I don't want to lock my keys in the car. Now there's a various structures I can put in place. So one structure is if I've got a new car with those electronic lights, I put the structure in place that I never lock the car except with the FOB, whatever FOB stands for. <laughs> so I click it, and it locks it. If I don't have this FOB in my hand, I don't lock it, which means I never go over and hit the button. Now, as long as I follow that structure, I will always have my keys in my hand. If, now here's the thing with this particular structure, it's based upon an assumption, and some structures are. The assumption is that the keys are attached to the fob. Now, I have a fob at home that is broke. The keys are no longer attached. That structure doesn't work. So as long as the assumption is in place, it works. But what if I don't have an electric locks? So there is another structure I can put in place. And this structure is... I never lock the car except with the key, period. So now, if I put that structure in place, that activity, every time I get out of my car, I lock it with the key, will I ever lock my keys in the car? No. Never. We call that a core structure. Creates automatically the result. There are some very powerful core structures in life. Not all are good, and we'll talk about that in a minute. You see, there's a lot of negative stru or a lot of structures we put in place that cause negative results. So the structure, though, a core structure, a core structure is one. If I do the action, I get the result. A power structure is one. I will get the result if I do the action if something is true. So it's a basic assumption. Now there's a third basic type of structure, and that is if we use the analogy of the, of the keys. Supposing I have a hide key. And I say, well, you know, my hide key allows me then to start my car. But it doesn't create the result of preventing me from locking my keys in the car. What it does is it allows me to go ahead and start the car because I can now use the key to open it, so now I can drive the car. So here's the distinction that's important. It's a little bit different result. See, the hide key doesn't prevent me from locking the keys in the car. It only ensures I can still drive the car. But now, there's a major weakness in this structure. You know what that is? What? Does you anybody? put the hide key back? If you don't put it back! There are some <laughs> structures in life, and this is an important distinction. They only work 
if another structure is put in conjunction with it. We call those strong structures. They're strong, but they're not power, and they're not core. So those are the three types. So now let's go back, I'm going to talk about, and there's this junction in my life, and I'm saying, I want to become a professional speaker. And I look at the club and I say, you know, that club has the structure that if I get involved in it and apply it to my life, I will develop the talents, the abilities, the skills to become a professional speaker. But it's not a core. See, it's not an automatic. First of all, if you just sit here week after week all year, nothing will change in your life. Just sitting in this room and being what partic- or, or watching the club doesn't create the results. It's when I stand up here and I contribute, I give my speech, and then I get the feedback. And the reason why this club is so powerful for me and for everybody who participates is that the, chlor- the club is designed to give the feedback that helps us see what we need to know to get the result. You have two people who have been filming and giving us the opportunity to see ourselves. We have phenomenal evaluations. We've incorporated this telling stories, which we all know is so critically important to being a successful speaker. All I have to do And this is why it's such a strong structure. All I have to do is come and participate and engage in the activities and the results will come automatically. Now, I won't become a professional speaker. There's another assumption. I have to put other structures in place, which I'm in the process of doing. By the end of this year, I will have been given my first professional workshop for money. And it's because of this club that this has happened. I've also in the process, it's another structure I put into place, is I need to finish a book, I needed to join a writing class or a club to be with other people that hold me accountable. So last week we finished uh, a five-week writing uh, class, and I finished my third story in my book, The Garden Collection of Short Stories, and I start the next club, or the next class, series of class, next week, and I'll have my fourth story completed. So I only have two left, and I'll be ready to publish my book. So the results are coming. Now, anybody, and you know, it's my exciting, I just want to point, make out another point. I've noticed that the people who have participated on a regular basis in this club are transforming. I, and I'm watching it. You know, I've watched Susan in this last year. Literally, I remember when she gave a presentation a year ago, and I said to her, Susan, you could just professionally, and it would make a powerful difference. And she had a concept. She was operating out of a belief system. And we looked at it, and she said, you know what, that's true. And we looked at Luana, and when I saw Luana, and she's always been, I want to do it, but I can't, and there's always been this kind of hesitation. And Luana has just been like a butterfly. And then I watched Dolores last week, or two weeks ago, and here was this dynamic, excited speaker, and she wasn't like that a year ago. And and the three and four people, and, and, and Rick, I've seen some changes, like in your presentation. The people who have participated on a regular basis have transformed themselves, which could only happen this club. That's my opinion, and that's been my experience. Now, as a, just a point of reference, we didn't discuss this, but Madam Timer, how much, what are we at, or Mr. Timer? You have one more minute before you get the green. So okay. 15. That's great. We're that's at 14 right, right on time. Now, so before I go on to, to my conclusion, I want to just briefly give some feedback here. So have you heard me say something that you would disagree with, that you would say, Cliff, you know, I can see what you're saying, and I can see where you're coming from, but I, and then you have some, some disagreement with that. Is there anybody that would disagree with something what I've said today? Okay, so then we understand the power of structure. 
So I, I'll show you how I'm applying this. Okay, the, uh, we're looking at, the, there's only, what, five people here. And we're talking about social networks and all this. And I'm saying, you know, Cliff, you're vice president of public relations. See, there are structures that you can put in place that will cause people to be here. If you do the structure, you get the results. But here's the trade-off. You have to put the energy in. Now, see, emotionally, I have no problem putting the energy into giving a speech. But I do have some problems emotionally putting the energy in to put that other structure in place. And here's my point. If you don't do something different, don't expect different results. So, what we're saying is, see, my structure is right now, I'm doing the same thing I've done all year as Vice President of Public Relations. So, we're getting the same results that we had a year ago. So, I'm transforming because I'm putting the structure in place to do it. But the structure I'm putting in place as Vice President of Public Relations is to do nothing different. And therefore, there's no different results. Now, here's the beautiful thing. If the club puts that structure in place, we will get guests. And if our message is put across and people see the transformation that occurs, this club will grow. And then I won't get all the time to speak that I'm getting. So there might be some selfish motivation on my part. But here's the point, ladies and gentlemen. It's all based on structure. I don't care what it is you have in your life. If you don't like it, it's the structure you put in place. If you want your life to be different, do something different. Now, I want to conclude by talking about something that is a very important structure, I think, for all of us. And I've become very passionate about it, if you'll notice, in the last few weeks. You know, we all are born with what I call our potential for full self-expression. You know, we, we have this ability, and you know, if you look at any of the great performers or athletes or business people, they didn't start out like that, you see? But we tend to kind of get stuck, right? There, and you know what it is? See, there are certain belief systems operating in the background to say, well, I can't do this or that's, or I don't feel comfortable. So there's a structure in place in the Toastmasters International that's going to occur in two weeks that has the potential, the opportunity to transform your life if you know how to approach it. And what am I talking about? The, the International Speech Contest. Now you say, well, Cliff, I've been doing it for years. What's the point? Here's the difference. You see, if our belief system is set up right, what is the purpose? What is the structure of the International Speech Contest? How is it structured? Well, you say it's like every other contest. What is the purpose? The purpose is part of the structure. Do you get that? Mm -hmm. What's the purpose of that speech? To cause us to take a risk in that. No, that's it's not. Out of our standard role. No, that's the result. What's the purpose of the speech? To inspire. To, to inspire. inspire. To inspire, yeah. Now, if that's the purpose of the speech, think about it. If you're inspired and you want to share something with somebody, and I say, you know, I saw something, and I am so, and you start talking and you're sharing this, what's the first thing that happens? They interrupt you! <laughs> they do! When they start, to, oh, you know, I took, I, I, and they start telling you their opinion. <laughs> and there goes your great inspiration! You have, ladies and gentlemen, seven and a half minutes of uninterrupted time to people <laughs> listen to you. And I promise you, not one person will interrupt you for seven and a half minutes. And you go longer, but then they get all upset. <laughs> Here's what happens, though. This is why we don't take advantage of it. We have this belief system in, operating that, in the background. It says... Well, my speech has to be blank. What? If it's not blank, what's the word? Inspiration. Winnable. 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 Who says it has to be winnable? It's a lie. I want you to know it's a lie. 
If you have a full complement, there's going to be eight people there. There's seven out of eight chances you're going to lose. And who cares? Do you know how many people's lives have been changed because somebody got up here and spoke with passion about something that meant something in their life and it touched somebody? So what's the goal of the speech that makes it valuable for you? So that you expand yourself. Two questions you want to ask. One, is it personal? Is it something I believe in? And two, what's the best I can do to convey it? Now here's the difference on those two approaches. If I say, is it winnable? I have to look outside of myself at the world and try and figure out what the world is going to think about it. Forget what the world thinks. But if I look at, is it personal? And what can I do the best to present it? Then I look at me. And I'm in complete control. Everyone in this club aspires to be a professional presenter or speaker. There is no better tool to help you accomplish that than that speech. Because to accomplish those goals of making it personal and what's the best you can do, you have to reach inside yourself and ask yourself, what makes a difference in my life? We all should be there. And that is the